Hi, welcome back. My name's Callum from DX Commander. In the last video, we had a bit of a muck up trying to get a 40 meter element working with the 10 meter element and the 40 meter was linear loaded. And harmonics on linear loaded antennas are different to straight antennas. Yes, whatever. <laughs> the Wigglies have got a different place to go. So I think it was Mike M0MSN and James M0YOM said, well, a quick dirty way out of this is to put a coil in it. Since this is a fiberglass tube, we don't need a form or anything. We could just wrap a little coil around. So we did the maths and we worked out we needed 13 or 14 turns around the pole to bring in 40 meters. And, and it worked. The placing of where the elements should be, if you are going to build, say, a homebrew, you want to nest this up a tree or something, that seems to be important as well. So this is, I had just trimmed the field and didn't realise it would come out so badly on the, on the picture. But anyway, that's the base plate and the ground, the driven plate and the ground plate of the DX Commander Rapide. So starting at the, on the left-hand side, the SO239, we've got the elements in order 15, 17, 12, 20, then we've got 40, which we're going to focus on in a minute, and then 10. Now, 10's right next to 40, so last night I thought it was a brilliant idea to swap 12 and 10 over. I didn't realise it was so close. I thought that difference of separation will just fix every problem I've got under the sun. Actually, it made it worse. But whatever, let's uh, see what else, what other footage we've got. So this is the coil driven element, as you can see. And this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14. So you can see on the right hand side at the bottom, we've got the 40 meter element comes up to a little jibbly jobbly jubbly clip. <laughs> That goes actually to the uh, guide plate, which I'll show you in a minute. And then it goes round in a coil. And it turns out that each time we go round, it's about 200 kilohertz. Actually, it's 220 kilohertz going round once. Then we just come out of that. Now, I haven't intentionally... I haven't made this exactly very pretty. I just... This is a kind of my prototype. But you could do that really nicely with, like, cable ties or shrink wrap or whatever you want. We haven't smoke tested this yet tom is coming to see me tomorrow which is thursday and we're going to run a few watts down here and see if we can get it smoking but and i have my little infrared temperature gun you know that should be a laugh and then it, the element goes straight up to the top so let me just tell you the spec if you wanted to build this if you wanted usa which is kind of settled at sort of two seven point two five so you get all the way from seven point two to seven point three ish you need 13 turns all the way around, all the way to the top, and then back down to the upper spreader by about six inches. And that's it. You, you get a perfect tune. And I'll give you the cut chart in a minute for... In fact, I'll put the cut chart in the description, all right? Rather than me reeling out a load of figures here. If you want UK, which is centred around kind of 7.1-ish, then add a turn... But instead of coming all the way back down from the top to the upper spreader, go about halfway. And you can tune that depending exactly where you want it. I've got mine at 7.15, 1 to, well, 1.2 to 1 or something. And that's fine. Slightly sharper than a regular vertical. In other words, the SWR curve on this, because it's got a coil on it, it's just slightly sharper. A full quarter wave would be slightly wider. That's all. Let me run through some SWR charts. Oh, before we go anywhere, let me give you a little tip here. This here is, I think I can zoom in. Some people go up, we've got a little metal eyelet at the top of most DX Commander poles, not the Expedition. So if you don't want to go through the eyelet, I supply a little bit of this PVC tubing. You slip that over the end and honestly, it holds it forever. It's absolutely fine. And that's how you do it within Expedition, which you're out of stock of anyway. So here we are. Uh, oh, okay. I'm I'm bottomed out at about 7125. That whole screen is 100 kilohertz from left to right. So you can see I'm about 1 1.2, 1 1.3 on the left-hand side, about 1.4 on the right-hand side, over 100 kilohertz. So that's pretty good. 
Um, we haven't got the 30 meter element because we've replaced the 30 with this 40, you see. That's 500k wide here. And I'm in the field, I'm about 10 meters away with something called Westflex 103, very high quality coax to the stick here. So 500 kilohertz centered at 14195 ample 20 meters is absolutely fine this one's a little bit blurred i'm sorry 18.1 is 1.23 to 1 and that's a 250 kilohertz graph but um 17 meter bands pretty narrow anyway so it's fine best i can get on 21 at 21.1 .1, as it so happens and that's tunable it's its own element you can cut and shorten it whatever is 1.97 i can't do any better no matter what i do it's tough. Uh, 12, I didn't have a problem with. Okay, this is centered at 24,990. So I need to add about half an inch, one centimeter, just to send it back down 1.18. Best I can get is 1.79 on the 10 meter band. But you can see that's a 500 kilohertz. That's out of focus. Have we got a better shot of that? No. Um, 1.791 across 500 kilohertz. Now, if you've got a longer length of coax, you will find, due to the loss of the coax, these SWR numbers will be better. And also, coax acts sometimes as a transformer. It's a whole, a whole other video, right? You see, the thing is, impedance repeats every half wavelength. So if you've got 62 ohms at the feed point and you've got a half wavelength of coax, less the velocity factor, and you plug your meter in there, you will get an accurate meeting from the feed point, okay? What's happening is that impedance is traveling down the line at odd places. So if you cut it at the wrong place, you could actually end up having a much better match, if you know what I mean. But I love it. It works tremendously. At the rig end, you see, I'm getting like 1.3 to 1 across all the bands because I'm running 50 meters and it's 160 foot of coax. Good quality coax but it settles all the SWR curves. So I can't really do the testing at the rig end. I've got to get out in the field, which is what you can see here. The next uh, piece of R&D will be the 12 meter signature, and that will have a coil driven 80 meter element. So look forward to that. Next video is this one. Have a great day, everybody. We're off to Bude in Cornwall very short, shortly, and uh, I'm gonna have a week off. There's a few videos I've done that are in stock. <laughs> you can enjoy them when I'm away. All the best now.